So this video is all about projectile motion and I'd like to look at one example in particular which is the motion of a projectile like a bullet leaving a rifle. So what we find is if you're firing a weapon and you're aiming exactly at the point of the target that you want the bullet to, to actually hit, uh, what we find is that um, it kind of actually lands just below the centre of the target. And the further that you are away, the more the bullet drops as it flies through the air. And this is something that we need to take account of when we're actually shooting and we adjust the sights. But in terms of physics, we can actually work out how much something drops as it's moving. Now here's my uh, target from when I was shooting. And basically uh, what I had was I started out about 25 meters away from the target and I almost got it uh, through the center. And as I moved the target out to 50 meters uh, and then I moved it further away. So this one is at 75 meters. This one was at 100. And then this one here was about 200 meters in total. What I found was that even though I was always aiming as best as I could at the center of the target, when I actually hit the target, what I found was that I was actually missing it. Now the reason was, uh, not that my shooting was bad, but because the further away from the target I was, the greater the distance that the bullet actually dropped through the air, because it was spending longer in the air. And this is something that we can investigate by looking at projectile motion. Now if we look at an example using a rifle a bit like this, what we can look at is maybe how much the bullet actually drops through the air in the vertical direction, after it leaves at the end of the barrel itself. Now, in order to do this, we need to think about the motion in both the vertical and horizontal distances. And effectively, what we're going to have is if it starts out horizontally, as the motion goes on, we're gonna get this kind of parabolic path a bit like this. This is massively exaggerated, by the way. So what do I know? Well, first of all, I can think about SUVAT in the horizontal direction. And I know it's horizontal because I'm going to put a little arrow at the top. Now, if we maybe fire a rifle 300 meters, that means the horizontal displacement from the, the rifle to the target is a distance of 300 meters. And I'm writing this down with the unit, so I know I've got it in SI units. What's the initial velocity of that round? Well, the muzzle velocity of an SA-80 is approximately 940 meters per second. And what I'm going to assume is that the acceleration is zero. This is like no air resistance. And therefore the final velocity is also 940 meters per second. So this is some information that I know. If I now consider the vertical motion, and again, I'm gonna write down SUVAT. You know, I know what I'm doing, but even as an experienced teacher, it's still just good to write this down. What we want to know is how much the, the rifle, or that, how much the bullet actually drops. And it's this, vertical displacement that I'm interested. Effectively, if I'm aiming at this point on the target, how far will I miss by? Now, if, I, if the weapon is horizontal, it means the vertical component is initially zero. Again, this is our unknown quantity. We don't know the final velocity, but I do know that if I'm on Earth, the acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared. And basically, this is the information that I might get given in the question. And this is what I'm trying to find out. However, I can't find it out because I don't have enough variables here. So what I need to think about then is maybe what else, what else I can work out. So if we have something with a constant acceleration, or in this case, a zero acceleration, we know that basically the velocity is equal to the displacement traveled per unit time. And I can rearrange this to say that time is equal to the displacement divided by the velocity, which in this case, the displacement horizontally is 300 meters and it does it in nine, at 940 meters per second. And this means the time it takes to travel is 300 over 940, which is equal to 0 0.319 of a second. Now, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna store this number in my calculator. I mean, the real number is I think 1489. So basically this is my number that I just keep in my calculator. It's an intermediate step but I can basically say that it travels for about a third of a second. So 0 0.32 of a second. Now if that's the time it's traveling horizontally, that must also be the time that it's traveling vertically. And what I can then say is that the vertical time is equal to 0 0.32 of a second. Now the next step is now I've got three known quantities and I'm trying to find the fourth. 
I need to use a CVAT equation that doesn't have a V term in it. And the one I'm, that I'm going to use is S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. Because I, I know U, I know T, and I know A. Now the good thing about this is often if U is zero, then we can get rid of that first part of the equation and say that S is equal to a half AT squared. I can put my numbers in and say that the displacement in the vertical direction is equal to a half times 9.81 multiplied by t squared, which is 0 0.32 squared. And again, when I do the calculation, I'm not just going to use a value of three, 0 0.32. I'm going to use my, you know, the number that I've got in my calculator. And when I do that, I find that the, the vertical displacement is equal to 0 0.499, which is effectively equal to 0 0.50 of a meter. So what this means is, if you don't adjust your sights and you aim at a target which is 300 meters away, now you know 300 meters is a long way and that's effectively the, the maximum effective range of an SA-80. If you aim at a target, you're gonna hit half a meter below it. So what you need to do then is make sure that you aim half a meter above the target in order to hit it. Now the reality is that the sights on a weapon can be adjusted and you, there's a little dial that you adjust on how far uh, the target is away from where you are. And this basically brings the weapon up. So though you might be aiming your sights at the target, the actual barrel is pointing up slightly, so you still get the, uh, the rounds landing exactly on target. But that's just one example. We can look at uh, projectile motion, perhaps maybe marbles falling off uh, a desk. It might be water leaving a hose pipe, or it might even be perhaps, you know, the motion of a charged particle in perhaps an electric field. The important thing is that the vertical velocity gets bigger and bigger as time goes on, but the horizontal velocity always has the same magnitude because there's no force in that horizontal direction. Hopefully uh, that explains enough about projectile motion. It is complicated uh, and it's something that just comes to you with practice. But if you follow my advice, you write SUVAT horizontally, SUVAT vertically, you do some very straightforward, simple calculations, you will always get the right answer. Thank you. That look all right? That look all right? Yeah. Okay. If, if you stick a bit of muzzle flash, oh, yeah, flash I'll on. I'll do stuff like that. <laughs> okay.